Hey YouTube, it's Diane. I thought I would do, I'm waiting for one of my children who is in driving school at the moment. Um, it's a long two weeks. In Minnesota, we're required that if you're under 18, you have to have 30 hours classroom time and then six hours behind the wheel. And so our son is doing the classroom time three hours a day for 10 days, Monday through Friday. So it's it's a long two weeks, but it gets it done in one one fell swoop. So I'm just sitting here, and I was cross-stitching, and, um, well, I could show you what I'm cross-stitching. I am in a round robin. Let me fold this. It's a really big piece of fabric, so let me fold it. Hopefully you don't get it dizzy. <laughs> um, it is this one. It's called, uh, Garden Stars by Ink Circles. I'll show it in more detail in a different video. Uh, before I send it off in my round robin, I'm doing one of the I'm doing the largest motif in the project. I think it'll help everybody else to anchor what motifs they're going to do. So I have a tag and I have three questions in my tag. I'm going to call it the Tips and Techniques tag. Nice alliteration. Uh, number one, we've talked about pattern storage we've taught floss storage. When you are working on a project, it's a work in progress. It's not one of your UFOs, it's a work in progress. When you are physically stitching on that pro project, what do you do to keep the project clean? Besides wash your hands. Besides wash your hands, what else do you do to keep your project clean? This I was thinking about it the other day. Um, one thing I do is I never wear a fuzzy sweater. I had a project once and I was stitching on it, stitching on it, and I didn't realize until I actually had it done and I looked back and I thought, well, why is this one, it was a big area of color, why is this one area weird? It, it, it looked odd. And I looked at it, and I had been wearing a green sweater. It wasn't extremely fuzzy, but it had enough fuzz on it that it got caught up in the fibers as I was stitching. So I encourage you to not wear you know, a, a fuzzy clothing. Um, and, and if you have an afghan or something on your lap, just be aware of that, that that kind of fiber can get caught in there. The second thing that I do, uh, it gets very dry here in Minnesota, especially in the winter. And I'm very cautious on what kind of lotions I use on my hands. And the favorite one that I use is called Gloves in a Bottle. It's a blue bottle with white writing on it. I've also used Udder Cream, U-D-D-E-R Cream. And that is at Walmart. Utter, uh, Gloves in a Bottle, I've seen it, yes, it's at the cross stitch store, but it's getting more... The dermatologist at our medical clinic has it, and it, it's becoming more available. And you, it's about a bottle about this big, and you get that for six dollars. And you think, oh my, that's so much. But the reality is, why I prefer that over Utter Cream. Now, um, first of all, both of them will not affect your stitching, as in they won't put a film or anything on your project. So that's good for both of them. I prefer gloves in the bottle because, first of all, you only need like a pea size, if that much. And it uh, it covers your whole hands and even a little bit up your arms. Gloves in a bottle. I can wash my hands, and I, I have young kids, so I wash my hands a lot. I can wash my hands three or four times easily. With I can still feel it there, but I don't feel like I have to reapply. Also, um, it's there's no scent, and there have been lotions in the past that will like burn and itch my skin. I've never had an issue with that with gloves in a bottle. So even though that bottle is, is small, it's probably four inches high, it lasts a long time. And yes, there's a bigger bottle. I've never had to buy a bigger bottle. I've always just bought a littler bottle. And that'll last me a good year. I mean... It lasts a long, long, long time. And again, you don't have to use that much. It, it's, it's really a quality product. 
and so that's what I do to keep my projects clean as I'm working on them. Um, I wash whenever possible. I use treasure wash, although with hand dyed fabrics and fibers that I'm using more and more, that's getting hit or miss. But um, when it's all DMC, I can and Krennic. I've washed Krennic. I haven't had any issues with that. I've also used dish soap in the past, but you must, 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 must make sure if you use dish soap, no bleach, no power scrubber, scent, blah, 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 blah. Just the basic, basic blue dawn dish soap, which is harder and harder to find. That's what I prefer to do my dishes in anyway, uh, instead of all these other added ingredients and it just, I don't know, they don't live up to their promise. So that's m number one. Question number two. Is there a technique or a tip that something you do that with all the other tags floating around has not been mentioned? And for me, it would have to be... Um, I've mentioned it before. It hasn't been a specific question, but I've mentioned that I have, once I use a needle for metallics, I never use it for DMC or other floss. I prefer petite needles. I prefer John James or the Bonin, Bohin needles. I don't like DMC needles at all. But for me, find a needle that you like. There's some people, uh, due to allergies, there are certain needles that cause issues. But find a needle you like and don't be afraid to change it when you need to. If you feel it's tarnished or it's just not doing the job, toss it. Get rid of it. Your project will be better for it in the long run. So that's probably my uh, tip. Um, and number three is... A lot of us have been stitching for years. I've been stitching for 20, well, before I got married, and I've been married 23 years. What would you tell a new stitcher? How would you encourage them? What would be the one, you don't want an hour, an hour, an hour, an hour, lecture them, but what one thing would you say to them or suggest they try or do or think about to keep them interested in our craft, to keep our craft growing? What's the one thing you would do? or say. For me, I would say don't be afraid to try new things, um, whether it's a new designer, a new fiber, a uh, new fabric. Don't be afraid to try new things, but realize you can't try everything at one time. There's just not enough time in the universe for that. But you can get to it eventually. And that's why I like uh, my cross-stitch journal, because you know, if I have a pattern in the future, kind of a wish list that I can write in the back, and and then, you know, when I get that pattern, or maybe I just, when I'm ready to buy that pattern, I look at it and go, I don't really like that one anymore, so I can cross it off my wish list. But my advice would be to enjoy the craft. Um, don't feel that just because everybody else is doing a heaven and earth, you have to do a heaven and earth, or everybody else is doing mirabilia, you have to do one. There's such variety in the home, or excuse me, in the cross stitch community regarding designers and and styles of of work. Um, maybe the piece I'm working on would be a piece that would be too large for you to try. Try something smaller. Um, but I encourage you to not be afraid to try something new. But also give yourself a time to grow in this art, um, to perfect. The reality is, I quilt, and when you perfect that quarter inch seam, it's the basic, basic thing, but you perfect that quarter inch seam, everything else you ever try is that much better. In cross stitching, perfecting your X, the tension, Railroading, if you want to railroad, how your fibers lay, their laying tools and stuff. I've never used them, but I know that people really enjoy them. 
perfecting the basics of cross stitch and keep practicing those basics. The basic cross stitch, the basic back stitch, understanding the terminology. When you do that and you take time to continue to do that, that's why when I do a big complicated project, it's really nice just to do a quote unquote simpler project, basic project, because getting back to those basics and keep perfecting that, keep perfecting that in everything you do specialty stitches, using silks, using wool, using metallics, beading, whatever it may be, is that much better. So that would be my number one. Don't be afraid to try new things, but take time to perfect those basics and give yourself that time to grow. You don't have to do everything tomorrow. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. But those are the three questions I have today. Um, if you have any ideas on you know, storing your projects till you get to them next week or, or anything along that line would definitely go into question number one. But I encourage you to, to think about the questions and make a video and answer. Or comment below on this video and say, hey, I do this or I don't do that or I've learned this and I've learned that. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.